Hey, eyes up here. <laughs> Hello there, folks. Steve Christensen's my name, the ice cream bloke, self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School down here, Wildwood, Missouri. It's lovely to have you there. Look, whether you're uh, sitting in bed, sitting in the office, on the lounge chair, on the toilet, it's nice to be in your life at this period of time. Do want to thank our episode sponsorship, iRice. Anything that goes on ice cream, anything that goes in ice cream, flavors, toppings, bases. They do a great job with water ices. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that I'm getting a lot more of our Scoop School viewers saying, hey, I talked to Ed at iRice. My question is, is Rod Oranger phasing out of the system? Is Ed becoming the new Rod Oranger? Why don't you give him a call and ask Ed yourself. Thank you for your episode sponsorship. Great uh, products down there. Again, the link is down below. So uh, a couple of things about bags of mix. What we have down here is a uh, two and a half gallon bag of mix. When you get them in, we've done previous episodes on can you freeze it, can you not? Yes, you can. Sometimes you may find that you'll have mix in your refrigerator, refrigerator? refrigerator that might be past the use by date and you're thinking well is it okay well there's a number of ways to find that out the first of which though is you've got to make sure that you don't have what they call colloidal separation Madeline if I'm gonna pop this bag over here can you kind of see some of this discoloration here there's a little bit of yellowy tinge through it Sometimes that can actually get quite greeny looking. On the outset, you might think, oh, this mix is ba bad and throw it away. That's not the case. This is called colloidal separation. It's where the fats and the waters have actually separated here, just kind of like old school uh, salad dressing. So it doesn't mean it's bad, it just means it's separated out. I'm not a big fan of just shaking the bag like this. I don't think you get good permeation on the shake. I think you need to go in both ends and shake and knead as you go to. You do it that side, shake and knead. I'm not saying, look, up here. I'm not saying knead as in N-E-E-D. I mean K-N-E-A-D. Back down. Shake and knead, shake and knead. You'll do the same thing over this end. This is the way you really should be uh, looking at the process or every time you get a bag of mix out, again, don't just do a shake like that. Get in there, shake and knead. Another thing you'll want to have handy is a probe thermometer. I know that a lot of health departments would like you to be able to uh, test the temperature of the mix when you're receiving a delivery. I know a lot of ice cream shops have the uh, point and shoot laser thermometer. I don't think there's much better than actually putting a probe into the mix. So we're just gonna pop the cap off here and just put this probe thermometer in our mix to determine that it's a good temperature. Now it's been sitting on the counter here um, while we've been prepping. It really, when you're taking a delivery, should be under 40 degrees. You've gotta check with your health department on that, but generally, the that the temperature danger zone for mix or anything refrigerated is 40 and above and anything for hot food is 140 and below. And again, we're very close to that. But a probe thermometer is a great way to just to ensure that your mix is the right temperature. And then obviously there's the taste test. So I guess my, my point of this video is sometimes your mix could be playing tricks on you tricky mix that is basically look it looks kind of lumpy it looks thick it looks a little bit yellowy greeny tinge doesn't mean it's bad it just means it may have separated there's a few ways to make sure that you can make sure that it's all um uh what's the word i'm after i was gonna say permeate i don't know whether that's the right um number number I don't know whether that's the right word. Anyway, make sure that the fats and the waters are all mixed up there. Do a probe temperature on it just to make sure that you're receiving mix that's within the temperature range that you need to. Again, a good temperature monitoring system. Uh, like the good folks at ABW, we use them here around our facility. A lot of things you can do to make sure that your mix doesn't go bad prematurely. One last thing. If you are freezing mix, if you get a load of mix in and you freeze it, Make sure you're keeping a register of the time that you got it in store, the day that you put it in the freezer and how many days you had left on it, and then alternatively, when you take it out, that date's gotta be recorded so you can physically have a record of how much um, 
used by you've got left on that bag of mix because the, the date on the mix bag may not reflect the actual use by date. Interested in your comments, your experiences, if you have any questions about mix, we're happy to help you answer them. Happy to help you answer them? We're happy to help, we're happy to help you by answering them for you. Whew. You'd think this was the last video that we're filming today, it's actually the first. Wow! Thank you, Ed, Rod, and everyone out there at iRice. Again, um, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Let's do this again. Up here, you've got uh, our subscribe button. Down here, you've got a pretty good video. And over here, it's always under the arm. <laughs> over here, click to go to Scoop School. Keep on scooping. See you in the next video.